Do you want to know what it's like to be on Top Chef? Do you want to know what it's like to like interview Danny Glover, Bonnie Raitt, uh, have a show on Oprah's network? Whoa, yes, so you are in the right place. Welcome to Cookbooks with Virginia. My name is Virginia Willis. I'm a chef and cookbook author from Atlanta, Georgia, and I am so excited about today's guest. We go we go way back. We've been at this, we both, both been at this for just a minute. So today's guest is Tanya Holland, Chef Tanya Holland, and I've got her awesome, awesome cookbook, Brown Sugar Kitchen. We've got a giveaway. I'm talking to Tanya. If you miss this live, you're still going to want to stay tuned and, and catch it. You can win a book. We can ask questions directly to Tanya. So let me just get, let's get busy and get her on. And thank you so much for, for joining us today. Tanya. Hey, Virginia, how are you? I'm so great. Thank you so much for joining us today. Of course. I'm it's so excited. Beautiful. I know. I know it's early. I know it's a little bit earlier out in California. <laughs> you are. You're a hardworking woman. You've probably been up for a bit. Well, I got up for you this morning. <laughs> but you know, we serve breakfast and lunch normally. I mean, not during COVID. We're not doing breakfast, but right. um, so I'm an early riser. So it's all good. Yeah, no, that's so good. Well, I mean, man, I was so so for those of you. So Tanya has his incredible restaurants in Oakland. She's super famous for what California twist on soul food. Like, how would you describe your food? Yeah, I mean, it's um, it, it is exactly that. You know, California has definitely influenced my cooking. Uh, we have access to so much fresh produce year round, and you know, this is really the farm basket of the United States. So there's so much grown and raised around here. I'm really, really, really lucky to have access to it. And uh, yeah, soul food is, you know, the food of my heritage. So just combining that experience. And as you know, also with my background of uh, French training, French technique, we share an alma mater, La Varenne Ecole de Cuisine. I kind of forgot, I have to tell you, I kind of forgot about that. I thought you forgot that, that, right? And I was like, oh my God, that's right. We were both at La Varenne. Yeah. That's, there's you know that expression, the La Varenne Mafia, right? <laughs> I haven't heard of it, but I believe it's true. <laughs> definitely true. Well, you can't hardly, you know, like there's so many people that worked and or studied with Anne, you know, went yeah. to La Varenne, both in Paris and in Burgundy. And uh, and now and now there's offspring that have offspring. So <laughs> yeah. Well, your food. So y'all. So here's the deal. So um, there's also an Instagram giveaway for this. So if you go to my Instagram feed, you're gonna look for the cover of this book. And I don't have all the stickies on the picture, <laughs> Tanya, but I have it in the I have it in the Instagram. That makes me feel good. Oh my God. Well, I have had this book. I've had this book since it came out. And what I always tell people about this show is that, well, first of all, since it's cookbooks with Virginia, I can have whatever cookbook I want. They don't have to be new. They don't have to be right. old. It's just books. That, uh, books resonate, right? Yeah. I love, I love a good book. I love <laughs> good books. Just sit down and even if you, you know, you just focus on one recipe that you've never seen before, you know, wow. it's, it's worth it. And I, I just love learning. Well, I have to tell you, when I was just thumbing through getting ready for today, and I'm going to get back to telling everybody how they can win a copy. I saw your recipe in here for andouille gougeres, and I, I swear I had to push a little bit of drool back in my mouth. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, that sounds genius. Thank you. That's a favorite, especially for cocktail parties. And, you know, we... Um, Learn to make the gougeres in Burgundy. So they've always been a favorite little snack of mine. And when you first make shoe pastry, it just, it's so fun. You know, it's really quick and easy and you feel so like, wow, I did something. You know, I made this really cool dough that's like, it's twice cooked. It's, it's really, a, it's, it's a fun. Cool. And then I think the other thing about it, you know, and I always put in my recipe for gougeres is like people think that they have messed it up, right? Because this is like this like snotty, eggy mess. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, you know, this beautiful thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. All right. So y'all, you can win a copy of her book. You're going to go to my Instagram feed. You're going to like me. And then you're like Miss Tanya Holland. It's at Miss Tanya Holland. And you're going to like us both. And you're going to tag a friend and make a comment. And you're going to enter to win a copy of this book. Well, Tanya, you are like on you're you're like on fire. I mean, you've always <laughs> like had this like super solid presence, I think, in American cooking. 
you know, you're a leader, undoubtedly a leader, I think, in the culinary industry, certainly for women. Um, I know that I've always admired what you're doing and your your tenacity and your you are just you just stay you stay on it, right? You just stay you on it. You have to, you have to persevere. You have to, you know, I mean, I definitely have days where I'm just like, oh, again today. Why did why is the fight so hard? You know, why is the struggle so real? <laughs> but um, you know, to get anything substantial in life, you have to keep going for it. And um you were mentioning the Lavarin Mafia, but you know, it is, it's all about the network that you build over time, you know, the and relationships. the relationships, the people that you get to know, and you never know when they're going to pop up and it's going to be, you know, it's going to lead to an opportunity. So no. really, that's what I tell people all the time. All these opportunities that I have are based on relationships that I've nurtured over years. And then, so I stay in people's mind, you know, and, and wow. I do the same, like, with other people, you know, somebody wow. will approach me. Do you know somebody who does this? I'm like, oh yeah. You know, it's really, it's, it's, it's all about that. It is so all about that. And I think that, um, it always, it's always a reminder to both, to remember where you came from. Yeah. When you think about where you're going. Yes. And, and it's just, if, if nothing else, um, it's a cautionary tale about being a nice person. Yes. Right. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, it's like, you know, like when you, cause there are people, let's face it, Tani, we've met them, right? There are some folks that like, frankly, they get on top chef or they have this like podcast where they're interviewing fancy people and celebrities and stuff. And the head starts expanding like those Gougeres we're talking about. <laughs> oh yeah. We know them. We do know that. Yeah. <laughs> you know I, and you know what I always tell my staff, a little humility goes a long way. Amen. It's really all about humility, you know, and you just, you know, be grateful for the opportunities that come your way. Because as we've all learned during COVID, nothing lasts forever. You know, we, I think we all thought we were like, and then it's like COVID was like, nope. <laughs> right. And we have to be grateful for those moments when we are thriving and we are happy and we have opportunity. Um because life is full of ebbs and flows and cycles. No, it's true. But I have to tell you, so so you know, you 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 were like you've been here, you've got these successful restaurants, you've had successful cookbooks, you've been you know a, a major player on the American culinary scene for so long, and then I feel like you've you've had like a little like resurgence again. Like it's just yeah. like I mean a show on own, and you've been back to do the second <laughs> your podcast, yeah. Tanya's Table. I mean, congratulations. Thank you. You know, again, um, what do they say? It's, you know, it's preparation too, and just being ready and literally relationships. So I was shopping around a TV concept. I, you know, I wanted to get back on television. I love that. And I was calling it Tanya's table. This was last, the beginning of the year. So before uh -huh. COVID. Right. And a friend of mine called me and said, Hey, I'm working with these guys who are starting a podcast network. And uh -huh. I told them about you. So then it just morphed into the podcast. It was like, wow. and then COVID hit and it was natural because nobody was going out and wow. I was able to access people who normally wouldn't be available. Right. Um, so that gave me that high profile list of, you know, guests that I have. And, um, and then, you know, I'm just like not even thinking about television that much because I'm trying to pivot and figure out my business. Yeah. And I get a message on LinkedIn from the talent manager at OWN asking if I'm interested in the new show that, you know, new shows that they're producing. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> a week later, they're like, okay, great. You're doing a show. And I'm like, okay, what is it? <laughs> okay, let's call it Tanya's Kitchen Table. You know, it's just, it was amazing. It, I'm it, so happy for you. And, and, and I'm just going to say this because I can say it. I'm so glad that there's someone who knows what that. <laughs> they're doing on camera and that you are a real cook, a real chef, and you know Thank how you. not just like a Barbie doll actress person. I know that that doesn't sound very nice, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Yeah. You, you are a real cook teaching people really how to cook. Yeah. Right? Thank you. It's not like it's a, there's substance with the style. I mean, like you said, I've been doing it for a long time and I've, I've taught a lot of cooking classes. So, it comes naturally. Um, and I, I enjoy it. I, you know, when I first did television 20 plus years ago, 
I was like, this is the, the, the way with, in which I want to share my knowledge of food. Cause you just right. have a bigger reach, you know, and right, right, right. I enjoyed the process. There's a, as you know, there's so many moving parts. There's a lot to right. think. It takes a village. Um, it's very stimulating work because you, you have to think on your feet um, right. to make it, to make it look easy, right. To make it right. look relaxed. You have to do a lot of, there's a lot of behind the scenes work. Um, and yeah, you know, just like a restaurant, but, but, you know, very different, but um same thing, a lot of more moving parts than most people think. This is true. Well, I want to talk about, let's say hello to a couple of folks that are here. We've got, um, we've got Cynthia Stevens is here and Beverly is here. Oh, Cynthia. So Cynthia, you? I think that um, Cynthia and I do a lot of work together. I think that y'all might do some work together. At the yeah, yeah. That's that small world again. I know. All right. We, we, got just, yeah, we just started. That's a, uh, there's a lot of changes that are going to be happening at Beard too, right? That's like, right. That's right. So that's where Cynthia and I are working together on the awards committee. Yeah. That's awesome. And so we've got right. Kathy and Francine. I love this. Everyone puts their chef's pants on the same way, unless it's your turn to cook at the firehouse. <laughs> <laughs> I don't exactly know what that means, but I do like it. Yeah. It, so it sounds interesting. Uh -huh. All right. We got Margaret, um, the dry toast zoom call. That's awesome. And we've got um, Sherry and Coots. That's great. So talk to me. So that's, you know, so podcasts, I think that one of the things when we, so I was working at Martha Stewart 20 years ago, yeah. you know, you've been in television, you know, once upon a time, it took a village, right? There were four camera operators and there was a yeah. whole posse of people yeah. in the control room. Yeah. And there was a host and there was a, uh, there are all the things. And now, frankly, there are cooking shows shot on a phone, right? I know. And it's, it's crazy. And yeah. um, and I think that the, the 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 leveling of the playing field has its pluses and its minuses. Um, yeah. But I think that one of the things that is super exciting is podcasting. Like yeah. you know, we're so attached to our phones, and we can put in our buds and like listen to listen to an interview or or listen to a how to or or whatever. Um, so let's just. Talk about some of these guests, man. Aisha Curry, Erica Huggins, Bonnie yeah. Raitt, Danny Glover, uh, Johnny Mosley, Manit Shahan, Liz Wright, Elizabeth Faulkner. I mean, you're definitely bringing it for Tanya's table and season two. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, it's been wonderful. And, you know, it's interesting. Um, <clears throat> sorry, early morning here. Um, most of those people are literally one degree of separation. So, my friend was good friends with Danny Glover's assistant. When I first moved here, um, I, I had, I was in contact with him to, you know how you get asked to do a, uh, give a donation for a nonprofit. Right. It was meal, Meals on Wheels. Yes. So I got Danny to attend a dinner with some big donors. And, you know, of course they loved me for that and kind of knew that he was around. Um, and, um, you know, Elizabeth, of course, is a good friend. Monique yeah. is a colleague. Um, Aisha has a store that she just opened around the corner, Sweet July, oh. her, uh, nesting store. And um, also, you know, the Warriors were coming into my old location all the time. And I've met her several times. And, and she, likes, she likes to cook. Is it? I think she's got a show on Food Network. She does. Oh. It's a cooking channel, maybe cooking that channel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's done a couple. So yeah, she's a, she's a big fan of cooking. Um, and yeah, Bonnie, my friend's husband, plays in her band, Bonnie Raitt. That's so, awesome. um, you know, he told me he was coming out here and he was practicing with her, and um, we were making plans for dinner. And he said, "Hey, Bonnie wants to come," and I'm like. Okay. What? So I got to have dinner with her and she's such a foodie. She's really, you know, she's traveled, she's really into foodie. She's really into sustainability. And um, so I asked her and she said, yes. Yeah. So it was great. That's so great. Yeah. That's great. Well, I'm just going to say that, you know, good things often come to good people. And when oh, you're doing you. such amazing energy and good food out in the world, Thank There's you. a reason that so and so's assistant got you hooked up with that person. There's a reason, you know, you did this. You have this. You have Danny Glover on as a guest because it's like really good work that you did. Oh, thank people you. less fortunate. I mean, you know, come on. So that just makes me. Um, that thank makes you. me so happy. It's it's so great when good things happen to good people. 
Thank you. Yeah. Likewise. I feel like what goes around comes around, you know, and you were saying about being nice. I mean, that's the thing in this world. It's like good intentions, you know, what, what goes around comes around. You know. that, that is the truth. All right, let's see if we've got some. Um, we got a shout out. Oh, Rosemary says she loves Bonnie Raitt. Okay, so how do people listen to Tanya's table? Let's do that. Let's talk about that first because I want to make sure that people sign up or, or yeah. they need to know where to go to catch your podcast. Yeah, it's on all the outlets. I'm trying to think. Uh, it's definitely on Spotify. It's on Buzzsprout. Um, you know, most places you can do a search for yep. Tanya's, Tanya's Table podcast. Um, we have a um, an Instagram feed uh, at Tanya's Table podcast. So we list all the, the future guests when it's going to air. And um, yeah, they'll be up there for a while. So you can go back and, you know, season one, I had some great people too. Um, gosh, it seems so long ago now. I'm like, who did I talk to? I don't know. It's so funny. But, well, like, it does happen because that's like we're so in the moment with it. And then yeah. sometimes it takes these things like, you know, sort of to sort of get get yeah. sort of out there. Well, I had I had Alice, Alice Waters and Samin Nasrit. So, you know, starting with those two great conversations. Yeah, you you kind of can't you kind of can't beat that. Right. Uh, yeah. So, well, y'all, I want to show you this book again. So Tanya wrote this book. It's on Brown Sugar Kitchen. And I'm just going to show a couple of photographs from from this that really um, are going to make you hungry. <laughs> and this I love. Here's the, we got the shrimp gumbo. That looks Smoke chicken. <laughs> oh, my God. This one, okay, this is, this just spoke to me. And, of course, it's because I love cake. But that cake? Oh, yeah. Holy I mean, who who doesn't want a good bun cake, you know, with a couple? I know, of right? I it's, love bun cake. It's so OG, but it's like great yeah. spiced sweet potato bun cake. Yeah, it's good. It's good. That, I, will, I will tell you. That is just so <laughs> awesome. And we've got um, sweet potato scones with a brown sugar icing. And so I think the thing is, um, I love the recipes here because definitely chef inspired, definitely restaurant inspired. And you highlight... You highlight different people that you, you've worked with. Oh, here are the Andouille Bougeres. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. They're so good when they come out of the oven. And then you can make them, obviously, without the Andouille, too. You know, we always have a vegetarian version uh, without the Andouille. Right. No, that's good. And, you know, y'all, for those of you that aren't familiar with it, maybe we'll try to get this recipe up on the on the, um, on the the one of the social that's media channels later. Because it's easy. Super easy. It's like flour, water, you know, eggs. water and eggs. Yep. And it's a, uh, you know, pot of shoe dough is a, a workhorse in the kitchen. I mean, it's the same dough that's made the Gougeres. It also makes eclairs. You know, it's just a simple and, and people will think you're a genius when you make them, I think. I know. Right? It was one of the first doughs I made, like when I was in grades or like high school or something. I was like, what do we have in the cupboard? You know, and I got out the joy of cooking and I'm like, I found, you know, cheese puffs. <laughs> All right. No, I know people call them cheese. People do call them cheese puffs. Yeah. So you, know, you can win a copy of this book. I want, what I want you to do is you go to the Instagram feed and you look for the cover and you're going to like me and like Tanya and then go to town, right? Tag some friends, make some comments. And the giveaway goes on all weekend. And then we choose um, we choose a winner on Monday morning and we'll let you know. And then we we um, ship a, a book out to you. So what's going on now? Let's talk a little bit. So you, you've recorded your podcast. Yes, I'm done recording season two. Okay. Um, now I'm just kind of focusing on the restaurant. We just opened back up for uh, outdoor seating here. Okay. The, weather, the weather's been cooperating, so we're still doing that for a while. It's you know we still don't have indoor seating. Right. Like my empty restaurant uh, behind me, but um, bless you. I'm working on my next cookbook. Yay! Um, you know that those are a labor of love, so yeah. it, it's still you know a year and a half or more out, um, yeah. and it's called California Soul. Awesome. It'll be about how California influenced my cooking, as well as uh, we're going to cover the migration of African Americans from the South to California, That's and awesome. their influence on cooking. Which my uh, my great aunts and uncles moved out here from Louisiana. My grandmother and my grandfather were like their only siblings that really stayed in Louisiana. Most of them moved out to California. 
That's so interesting. And it really is, um, you know, so fascinating considering how the techniques and traditions and ingredients yep. move with migrations. Yes, absolutely. And it doesn't matter if it's Louisiana to California or yep. China to Rhode Island, right? That's right. That's it, right. It, it, it always happens. And then I also love the adjustments, right? Yep. So if you can't find blah, 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 right? right. You can't find X, but you can yep. find something close. You know, people, it has everything to do with people just want that taste of home. Right. But also people's creativity and improvising, you know, I mean, that's just what you have to do. My mom used to say that all the time when uh, I was growing up, she was cooking. She's like, oh, I don't have any of this. I don't have any of that. I'm just going to improvise. You right. know, that, that was her tool, knowing how to improvise. Right, right, right. And and sometimes, uh, sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. That's right. You and just, that's part, but that's all part of it, right? That's all that's part of it. Yeah. That's all part of improvising and kind of learning and on. Um, so how long has your family been in California? Um, I think the first um, came in the 40s, around the 40s. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. So they've been in mostly in Southern California. They've been there for a while. And then I have another great aunt that ended up in Portland, Oregon. And Virginia, you're not going to believe this. So two years ago, we had a family reunion in Portland, uh -huh. Oregon. Uh -huh. and my, my cousin, my mom's first cousin was hosting and she had this collage of photos and <clears throat> there was a business card. Those two of the aunts had a business called Lottie and Susie's place. And it said serving chicken dinners, barbecue and chitlins. And it was in the forties outside of Portland, Oregon. And it said on the card, always open. <laughs> and I was like, always Always, <laughs> like always open. But isn't that amazing? I mean, I'm like, it's in my blood and I didn't even know. That's, that is amazing. You know, but that it, it, in a way, um, it, in a way it's not surprising, right? Cause you come from mm -hmm. a family of, that has hospitality literally in their blood. Yeah, hospitality mm -hmm. is really the, I mean, that's what I'm passionate about. I love to cook, but more than that, I just love providing an experience for people and that hospitality, my parents were, were like that too. They weren't in the business, but they always had company and we always had food for company. Yes. And then I think that there's something to be said. I mean, obviously it's something that is impactful in your past and impactful in your present and your future. Yes. You know, I mean, in, in the forties, days of Jim Crow, even in California, I mean, definitely in the South, but even in yep. California, it wasn't always easy. No. I mean, it was frankly hard for people of color. Yeah, um, so it was hard. And that probably has everything to do with always open. Yeah, right. right? We're not going to go to. Yes. Someone absolutely. traveling you know, right. needed a place to be able to go eat. And so they needed they needed the hearth. That's right. They needed, you know, they needed a, a table to pull up to where they felt like that they could be with with friends and family and, and, and experience that mm -hmm. hospitality. Yep. Exactly. And that down home, you know, food. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so I have to ask you, so like, okay, so have you with your, with COVID and the changes that you're making, are you seeing like trends and what people want in terms of comfort food? And <laughs> you feel like that's like digging even deeper on that? Well, I think you and I both know fried chicken is never going out of style. No, uh -uh. <laughs> right? I mean, never, never. never. Yeah. <laughs> so lots of fried chicken. Um, we're known for our chicken and waffles. I'm not doing the waffles right now. They don't travel well. They're really yeah. light and heavy. And, um, you know, I just don't want to compromise um, that. But we've got our biscuits. Um, those are still very popular. Um, we're doing an oxtail dish, which is uh, also very popular right now. That's my mom. Tell her I said, hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> um, what else? I mean, gumbo always on the menu. We have, we've definitely pared down the menu because, yeah. you know, when you're doing takeout, you just, I mean, it's a lot of work where, you know, right. packaging stuff and. Yeah, well, it's, it's tremendous. I mean, I think that's what a lot of the maybe a lot of customers haven't understood that, you know, a restaurant that does occasional takeout and concentrates on seated dinners is a heck of a lot different from a takeout restaurant. Absolutely. I mean, just the physical space for packing. 
Right, right. The packing, um, the packing materials. I mean, there's so many things. My 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 semi private dining room right now is just it's all takeout um, containers. Right. But I think um, I know I cannot imagine in my heart and my head has hurt so much with consideration of my friends like you that are restaurateurs this past year. But I have also my heart has been so full about thanking this like tenacity, this hard work. Yeah, I'm not going to let my dream die. I have kept this restaurant open. How many years has your restaurant been open? Thirteen. Lucky 13. Lucky 13. Right? Lucky 13. Like, that is, y'all, for those of you that don't know it, like a, a scary number of restaurants. It's 90 in, in dog's year. In dog yeah. Year. yeah. <laughs> I was about to say, you about to get the American Classic Award from the Beer Foundation. <laughs> I know. <right? laughs> Seriously. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's see. We've got, so we've got uh, Tanya's here. Hi, Suzanne. Tanya. <laughs> yeah, the Chef Kathy. Kathy. This year. We've got Mallory talking around and uh, all sorts of people. Okay, so I've got a couple of questions to sort of sort of wrap it up that I've been been asking folks. And um, I'm just so thankful that you were able to come on today. And I want to make sure that everybody goes to Instagram and enters to win a copy of the book, uh, Brown Sugar Kitchen. And then I also want to make sure that people make certain to check out um, Tanya's Table podcast. Look at that big smile. That was like <laughs> maybe too like, big. <laughs> no, -uh. that's just like the biggest, happiest. Look, your dentist is happy with you. I know that. <laughs> so, um, okay. So here are my here's some questions. What is the last cookbook that you read or cooked from other than your own? Oh, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> it's you're gonna laugh, but it's called Heal Your Gut. <laughs> Love that. No, you know what, you I'm know all that, into that right now. You know that book. So it's a British woman. Um, mm -hmm. So you know, you have some of the recipe ingredients. You're like, what is she talking about? You know, but um, I really like. She does these soups, and I made a lamb and um, green pea and spinach soup. And then you you puree it so it's just like it's like ground lamb and it's uh -huh. just really warming and 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 it's gentle digest digestion because right. lamb is ground after you cook it. Right. Oh well, wow, that's no. I think it's. I mean, I definitely. Um, I think a couple things. Right. Like I've I've gone through this whole process. I lost a ton of weight. Yeah, you look I'm awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Um, but I'm also like, because of COVID, I've been really just trying to keep my immune system up yeah, and make sure that what I'm putting in my body is good and good for me so that I can absolutely be healthy, right? Yeah. Yep. That's, that's part of it. There's not a, there's not always a pill for something. There's certainly not always a pill for something like COVID. So we got to do our part, right? So that's cool. I wrote that down here earlier. I don't have a copy. I have heard of it, but I'm going to definitely check it out. That land yeah. sounds good. Sure. All right. We've got another one. Um, and I always love this one, especially with uh, professional chefs. What is your most indis what is an indispensable cooking tool? What is like? Oh, I mean, I I've said this many times. The rubber spatula is my favorite because I okay. got okay. everything out of there because it, it's wasteful. The, it, yeah, I don't like money. Food. That part. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So, um, all right. So, do you like just like the rubber spatula? Do you like the silicone that can go in a skillet too? Um, yeah, the silicone are, are great. I, I actually lean towards those because then you don't have to worry about them breaking off. I know. I love the white ones. And I think it's just a hang up from working at Martha, but they, <laughs> but they melt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's what we have in the restaurant because that's usually what you get at the um, restaurant supply store. But yeah. um, <coughs> sorry, at home, I have the other one. <coughs> you got me. it, chef. You good? Take a sip. Well, I'm so grateful for you getting up early, y'all. She's in California, and we are here. We are midday, practically over here in in Atlanta. All right, sour, salty, bitter, sweet, and savory. What's your What's your one? What's the one you have to have? Sour, salty, bitter, sweet, or savory? Oh God, you know, um, lately it's salty. I, I used to be such a sweet person, but uh, with age, I've just gravitated towards salt. <laughs> I, I, I get it. No, and I think it, but there's like it's important to like realize just enough, not too yeah, much. Yeah. That Goldilocks situation, yeah. and you know we have to worry about what we want our food to taste good, right? So yeah. salty. 
That's cool. That makes sense because you're 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 flavor. I'm a savory, yeah, I'm you're, a savory person, savory cook. Yeah, yeah, that's super cool. All right, so um, this is always kind of tricky, especially with someone like yourself that has been on television so much. Who's your favorite celebrity chef or cooking show? Like, what's what's one that if you are hanging out on a Saturday yeah. afternoon and you got to watch something, what do you, what my who might you watch? Well, you know, I've been binge watching and I'm just in love with now is Phil Rosenthal. Somebody feed Phil and he's not a chef, but he is an eater. Yeah. And he's and, on your show. Yeah, and he's such a nice man. Talk about a kind person. And, um, you know, he's just really genuine and genuinely curious and, and genuinely connects and present. And that just, you know, you know, he, I was on his show as well when, uh, for the San Francisco, uh, edition, uh, episode. And that's how he was. What you see is what you get. I like people like that as well. Yeah, I, I, I would love to hang out with Phil cause I know he has lots of stories. That's super cool. That's good to know. And it's always, it's, it's, he's seen, I have not met him, but he seems super nice. So it's really great to hear that, you know, but I think that you can often tell like when yeah. authenticity comes through and that's so fantastic yeah. that he's a, um, that he's a guest on your podcast. Yeah. Um, so, um, and then here's my last question. And I, I'm so curious about it. What is, um, what is your favorite food memory? Like if you, you know, what, what is one of your things when you think about your life and your past, like, something that you tasted or that you ate that was, was uh, transformative or important or fills your heart or fills your belly? I have so many, but I will say that, um, well, one I can think of, before I went to cooking school, I was living in New York City and one of my friends made dinner for me before I go. And he had been, he wasn't cooking in a restaurant kitchen. He was a, a waiter, but uh -huh. he, like, he just knew how to cook really well. And he made this pasta with caramelized uh, red onions, or actually they were almost uh, kind of candied a little bit and anchovies and crushed red pepper. And I was like, what is this flavor combination? Like, you know, I'd never had that uh -huh. salty, salty, sweet, hot kind of combination before. And I just, I love it. I'm always trying to replicate it. It's just simple and delicious because none of those ingredients cost a lot of money, right? Wow. You know? And, and think of a piece of la air, right? Yeah, a, exactly. Very, very similar. I love Mediterranean flavors. So that was really something that, you know, it's like, oh, this, this food thing is going to work for me. <laughs> That's so cool. That's good. And it's so, it's so interesting. Like, you know, of all the fancy places that we've gotten to eat and of all the fancy food that we've gotten to cook and all the fancy people that we've cooked for, right? Yep. Yep. It's a friend, wasn't even a professional chef. Yeah, waiter, and it was a pasta dish. <laughs> yeah. I love that though. Yeah. I think that that's that that is exactly encapsulates. I think about like why and how um, food can be so important. That absolutely. All right, so I know that you have a little bowl of black eyed peas. I just want to. So so I, have, I have my black eyed pea salad, and you know this is a a different way to eat black eyed peas. Uh, I like to serve at room temperature. Mm -hmm. We cook the peas until they're like. Um, al dente well, a little bit softer you want them to squish in your finger uh-huh jalapenos roast red pepper um we macerate the onions in a little red wine vinegar and extra virgin olive oil some fresh parsley and people love it year round not just you know new year's eve so it's yeah, a nice yeah, yeah and peas are good for your gut talk about healing your gut man peas that's are right like, and then like, biscuits just came out of the oven oh my god i want that so bad <laughs> So I, we have our uh, buttermilk biscuit and then um, bacon cheddar scallion biscuit. These are dangerous. Oh, Lord. Oh, yeah. I know. Sometimes yeah. Recipe, both happy. recipes are in the cookbook. Perfect. Yeah. Yay, y'all. That's awesome. Well, Tanya, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for oh, sharing Brown Sugar Kitchen with the world. Pleasure. And thank you for your podcast. I'm super excited. I always listen to podcasts when I'm when I'm doing my walk. So uh, it's a great way to just continue learning. I mean, they're really they're they're really great. I do too. I love to listen to them when I'm walking. It's super cool. Well, thank you so much for um, being on the show. Um, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. And it's so good to see you again. Thank so you. good luck with your stuff, and um and 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 we'll be in touch. Okay. Absolutely. All awesome. right. Take care. Thank you Bye. so much. Isn't that wonderful? I just...
uh, I had so much fun. Tiny and I go back a long time. She and I are both at La Varin. We weren't there exactly at the same time, but we've just been in the same circles. And y'all, huge, huge admiration for her. Um, I want you to go to tanyaholland.com and check her out. I want you to make sure, look at that beautiful smile. How could you not want to listen to that lovely lady right there? So you need to go and check out her podcast, check out her book, go to Instagram, win a free copy. I want to thank you so much for watching today. Bon appetit, y'all.